What's up, guys? Finze and Matthew here. And today we're going to be talking about Dolphins re-signing Devontae Parker. Uh, that was as of today, recently. That's the most recent one. Plus, there's more stuff I've missed that I haven't posted a video on, like Frank Gore and what happened earlier today. I uh, know. Yesterday. Monday. Yeah, Monday. Uh, yeah, that was yesterday with uh, Jawan James. So, we're going to get into Devontae Parker first. He signed a two-year... He re-signed us with us a two-year, $13 million deal. Now, he was expected to be cut this year based on his performance and his lack of a uh, lack of production throughout the years he's been with the Dolphins. Uh, but I guess Brian Flores decided to give him one last shot. I mean, the talent's always been there. Like, Devontae Parker's no doubt about it. We've seen him make huge plays. His hands, he has great hands. Uh, he could run routes pretty well. Uh, he has, he's pretty talented. He just never really got to the production that we expected him to be. I mean, his best year was 2016, 56 receptions, 744 yards, four touchdowns. That's not great, but it's really, really decent. That's like a 8.1 out of 10. Uh, he's always, he's inconsistent. But I get, but with, maybe with a new coaching staff, because I don't know if you guys remember this. Uh, last season, there was a report that Devontae Parker's agent had fired, had been complaining about Adam Gase and him not, Adam Gase not really liking him and not believing in him. But, I mean, to be honest, if we still had Adam Gase. I think uh, Devontae Parker would be cut, not just because of that report of, of, uh, of Adam Gase not liking him is because Adam Gase was in win now mode. Now we're in rebuild mode. Adam Gase would have cut him because he wanted to win a Super Bowl now, 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 and now we're in this rebuilding mode. So, yeah, I think Brian Flores is just giving him a one last shot to prove to see if he's worth our time. He probably believes in him more than Adam Gase does, obviously. Uh, thirteen million dollar deal. It's not wasting too much money. Uh, I would have paid him like five mil. But let's see how it turns out. I mean, he's talented. He's always had the potential. Fifty one point one percent catch rating last year. Ratio his ratio last year. Uh, like I said, two thousand sixteen his best year and his rate catch ratio was sixty four point four percent. So. He was drafted in 2015, first round, 14th overall. Um, like I said, his talent has always been there, but we just got to see it on the field. You know what I mean? Uh, all right, and, and that, on to the next subject. Um, the Broncos signed Juwan James. That was a massive deal. They signed him with a four-year, $52 million, $13 million that being guaranteed now makes him the highest-paid right tackle in the league. And... To be honest now, we don't have no right tackles. Now we got to find a replacement for him. But he's not the only spot we have a hole. We're, we need a whole new O-line. We need a whole new center. Josh Sinn is injured. Maybe when he comes back, he'll be play for us. But he's old. He's still, he's injury prone. Uh, we got center Jake Brindo. He's trash, but we just tendered him. Uh, good thing we got rid of Andre Branch, a defensive end. I know that has nothing to do with this. Subject, but good thing we got rid of him because he needed to go. We're paying way too much money. We need, we need, we're like, we have holes at right guard, tag, right tackle, center, everything. Like, we need to rebuild our whole O line. I was saying the Dolphins better make some big moves. I mean, some moves, some moves, it doesn't have to be big moves on the O line because whatever new quarterback comes in there, they're not gonna, they're not gonna do good. Like, I don't know how y'all think, like, Oh, we, the problem just ends by just drafting Kyler Murray. Like, no, like, if Kyler Murray steps up in there as a rookie quarterback with our O-line the way it is now, he's going to get sack, sack, sack. He's going to be like Ryan Tenno with most sack quarterback in the league. Anybody who steps in there is going to happen to it. I don't care if it's he could run, he's has ability to run. He has no O-line. Like, people say Ryan Tenno has no pocket awareness. He has no pockets awareness because they have no time to throw the ball. He has no time to see receivers open. He has like two seconds. 
Ridiculous. Ridiculous. We got to get an old line before we get a new quarterback. We're interested in reports. We're interested in Tyrod Taylor. But like I said, the old line needs to be fixed first before we get Tyrod Taylor. Uh, I mean, I don't like losing um, Juwan James, but like, he, he, knowing Juwan James, he was probably expecting like 15 mil. Like, and we're not going to pay him that type of money. We want to save money this free agency to rebuild. So, I mean, I don't like losing him, like I said. But if he wants big money, let him go. And, and he just got a huge offer. I'm happy for him. He's a good right tackle. Not going to say he deserves that type of money. But, but hey, get your money, man. Just, and on to the next one. Yesterday, yesterday, the bill signed running back Frank Gore. Now we got no running back either. Bro, uh, he's 33. He's gonna turn turn 33 in May. According to Pro Football Focus, not only was he efficient in running because he's patient, he's you can see him going through holes and waiting for holes to open up. He's not a speed guy. He's just a agile, patient run guy. Um, uh, so the Bills signed him on a one year, two million dollar deal. Uh, now the Bills got two weapons at running back. They got Lashawn McCoy and now Frank Gore. Uh, I suppose the Dolphins are now going to shift towards making Kenyon Drake our starter, which I'm not really too happy with because Kenyon Drake last year he had a bad year. And to be honest, like he's not patient at running. All he is is speed. Like Every time they hand the ball off to Kenyon Drake, he just goes burst right there. He doesn't wait for holes. That's why you've seen him first down, two yards, second down, three yards, third down, four yards. Like, and then eventually, 17-yard gain. It just, eventually, he gets a big gain. He just, he doesn't wait. You know what I mean? He doesn't wait. Uh, what I would do if I was a Dolphins GM or whoever's running, whatever position that's running the whole, the owner, if I was the owner, I would put Kalen Balaj as starter. Because we've seen flashes of how good he could be as a runner and catching. He's a good, very good, he's very good at catching. Uh... Yeah, Kalen, I would put Kalen Balaj. We got Brandon Bolden. What we could do is put Balaj starter, Brandon Bolden backup, and then Kane Drake third string. I would do that. Uh, that's all the news we have for today. Uh, like always, fins up no matter what. Peace.